From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. 2021 was truly a historic year for unruly passengers in the sky. We take a look at how bad it was and what some want Congress to do about it. The Taliban makes a comeback, a volcano blows for months, and countries continue to struggle with COVID. I'm Ian Lee with the year's biggest moments overseas. Good morning, Southwest Montana, about 632 now. Um, little snow was in the forecast. Yeah, uh, and um, again, today may be a little warmer, but tomorrow's going to be colder, and then we start a bit of a warm up. It's going to be short term and coming up in main weather. I'm going to talk about that uh, eight to 14 day outlook. You won't want to miss that. So. <laughs> I'll uh, be tuned in. I, I'm sure you will, although you've already seen it three other times yeah. today. Uh, temperatures into the single digits in Belgrade out toward Elena, a little warmer out toward Butte uh, for the morning. The wind speeds have been up, and that means the wind chills are down. Uh, it does look like we're going to see spotty snow showers today, especially in the mountains. Uh, areas like Big Sky and West Yellowstone picking up the best potential of snow during the day today. Another round overnight tonight. Uh, still bundle up. Temperatures into the teens for Bose but the wind chill values will probably be down into the single digits for most of the area for the afternoon today. You see the temperatures bouncing around. Got a couple more cool days before the warm up. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Awesome. See you in a bit. A runway incident delayed flights for at least two hours last night at the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport. Airport Director Brian Springer says a private Cessna Citation plane landed with its nose gear up and slid to a stop on the runway. Thankfully, there were no injuries. At about 9 p.m. last night, crews were working to clear the main runway and got it cleared at about 1030. Gallatin County Sheriff Dan Springer also confirmed there were no injuries and no fire. The sheriff said his deputies were called back off the emergency while en route because the situation was under control. Well, it has been a difficult week for the airline industry with thousands of cancellations in many cases due to staffing issues and those travel impacts, of course, lead to frustrated travelers. And as our Joe St. George reports, this year has set records for the number of complaints in the sky. And one question some are asking is should Congress do more to penalize those who lash out in the air? It has been quite the year for the removal of passengers from airplanes. Some get captured on camera, many do not, yet they still require police. So how does this year compare? Well, take a look at this graph. This is the number of FAA investigations into unruly passengers from 1995 until now. That spike is from this year, a year in which the TSA heavily promoted a zero tolerance campaign. The latest numbers show over 5,700 reports of unruly passengers in 2021. And these numbers are from before this past week. 4,100 plus of these incidents are related to masks. The FAA does not have the authority to file criminal charges, but they do have the ability to issue fines and take away privileges such as TSA pre-check. One of the biggest fines this year involved a man who brought and consumed alcohol on board a flight to San Diego. And when the flight attendant asked him to stop, he proceeded to allegedly sexually assault the flight attendant and smoke cannabis in the bathroom. That passenger was given a $40,000 fine, but some flight attendants are posing the question, should Congress be doing more? Flight attendants and aviation workers are saying, Please make it stop. Sarah Nelson is the international president of the Association of Flight Attendants. She recently testified in front of Congress, and she says one recent change flight attendants are pleased with is the fact the FAA and the Justice Department are beginning to work together in a more coordinated way to increase prosecutions. In fact, Attorney General Merrick Garland recently wrote this memo directing United States attorneys to prioritize prosecution of federal crimes occurring on commercial aircraft. But Nelson says Congress should take even more steps in the new year, like outlaw to go alcohol inside airports or mandate a stronger police presence inside terminals. Oftentimes, she says, issues can be predicted at the gate. We do need more enforcement in the airports because we are not seeing that happen. We need to ban to go alcohol. This is a major issue. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Some people in Ennis are without a home this morning after a fire gutted several of the Barker Village apartments yesterday morning. Words of the fire in this picture come to us courtesy of the Madisonian and Ennis. It's always rough to fight a fire, but particularly in this weather. Look at that ice just caked on the firefighter here in this next shot. The sheriff's office say no one was seriously hurt in the blaze. Several officers involved in a pursuit and officer involved shooting around Deer Lodge are on administrative leave while the incident is under investigation. 
After 11 on Tuesday evening, a Powell County deputy and Deer Lodge police officer responded to a report of a violation of a restraining order. The woman reported to be violating the order is also accused of vandalizing and stealing property, including a vehicle. She refused to get out of the vehicle and then drove off, which started the police pursuit. During the chase, the suspect rammed a parked car and two of the police vehicles, which did injure one of the officers. Two of the officers then fired and hit the suspect in the arm. She was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. And if part of your New Year's Eve Happy New Year celebration includes fireworks, the city of Bozeman is reminding revelers that fireworks are only allowed in city limits on specific days of the year, including New Year's Eve. Per city co code permitted fireworks include sparklers and fireworks that go no higher than 15 feet and are not designed to explode. Fireworks can be used from 11 p.m. on New Year's Eve to 1 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Day. The fireworks are only allowed in certain locations. There are distance restrictions for parks, nursing homes, and hospitals. You can check our website for more of what you can and cannot do with fireworks within city limits. Well, the battle against COVID-19 topped international headlines in 2021, and more fighting broke out in the Middle East. CBS's Ian Lee is in London with a look back at the stories that shaped the year. Much of the world entered 2021 in lockdown as countries struggled to stop new strains of COVID-19. Israel led the vaccine race, and as millions across the globe rolled up their sleeves, restrictions began to lift. The Summer Olympics in Tokyo went on, but for the first time in history, no spectators were allowed. In China, international investigators looking for COVID-19's origin came up empty-handed. It was a summer of tensions in the Middle East. 11 days of fighting between Israel and militants in Gaza killed more than 250 people. North Korea vowed to build an unstoppable military, launching ballistic missiles from a submarine and a train. The Taliban returned to power in Afghanistan after 20 years. Hundreds of Americans and Afghan civilians faced chaotic evacuations. A suicide bomb at the Kabul airport during the final pullout killed at least 180 people, including 13 American service members. Terror struck Britain when an ISIS-inspired attacker stabbed a lawmaker to death at a church in England. A volcano unleashed spectacular rivers of lava on the Spanish island of La Palma for months, swallowing up more than 2,000 homes and evacuating thousands of people. After 15 days of marathon talks in Scotland, diplomats from nearly 200 countries struck a major agreement to intensify global efforts to fight climate change. In Rome, 85-year-old Pope Francis spent 10 days in the hospital for intestinal surgery. The pontiff recovered and made several international visits across Europe and the Middle East. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan shocked the royal family, giving a bombshell interview to Oprah and accusing someone in the family of questioning what color their baby's skin would be. Their second child, Lilibet, was born in the summer. Britain said farewell to Queen Elizabeth's husband of 73 years, Prince Philip. The 99-year-old was laid to rest at Windsor Castle. Later in the year, the Queen had a health scare, skipping several key events on doctor's orders. But the 95-year-old was back at work after several weeks, and looking forward to ringing in 2022 with her family. Ian Lee, CBS News, London.